on time. There is a word. Amen. I'm going to ask that you turn to Genesis, the 21st chapter. We are going to look at a much ignored portion of Scripture. Starting with the ninth verse. And then we are going to read from Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, starting with the second verse. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, scoffing. And therefore she said to Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight. Because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman. Because he is your seed. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water. And putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water in the skin was used up. And she placed the boy under one of the scrub, shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, what else you Hagar? Fear not, for God has not heard the voice. God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, starting at the second verse, gives us a little background on wilderness and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart whether you would keep his commandments or not so he humbled you allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. That he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you. Nor did your foot swell these forty years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Father God, I come in the precious name of Jesus. Realizing my limitations, but knowing that there are no limits to what you could do. I ask that you get this human out of the way and send forth your word as you have it preached. And touch your people that they might receive it as you would have them receive it. 
This I ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Today, if you pray with me, we will be preaching as God inspires on the subject, Finding God in the Wilderness. Finding God in the Wilderness. Wilderness is defined by one dictionary as an unsettled, uncultivated region left in its natural condition. It refers to land. Another reference to wilderness is signified where there is what is uninhabited and uncultivated in the spiritual sense. Where are no good and truth, and also where truth is not yet conjoined with good. I like to simplify things to call wilderness that experience that you've never had before. That place in your life when you don't know left or right and don't know where to go. This sequestering will be a wilderness to a whole lot of people. We pray hard that it wouldn't happen. It's a fearful moment for we as a family, a church family, and individuals in the family. We don't know how long it's going to be or how rough it's going to be, but it's going to be a wilderness for some of us. It's a wilderness because you're out there with not knowing how tomorrow is going to work out. But as we read this word today, and we read the word and we find an interesting situation, we find a lady who had, you might even call, forced sex with her master. Who had a baby because Abraham and Sarah did not have enough faith to wait on God. God had promised Abraham a child. Sarah was not able to deliver a child and, and time had passed uh, as much as 10 years and no baby. They couldn't wait. So Sarah said, Abraham, you can have my bond servant. And make a baby out of her and therefore your descendants will come. And, and you know when you go and don't trust God, you make things rougher for yourself. You forget that if it can be done, and God says it shall be done, it's done by God and not by you. Amen. Well, Sarah did not realize that. Uh, but so, Sarah, the scripture tells us, was happy and laughing once she had this baby. But let's not go ahead of myself. Then, Hagar made fun out of Sarah and Ishmael. She made fun and laughed at him and scoffed at him and, 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 and called them names uh, in, in fear of them like you couldn't do it. You, you had to wait for me. Uh, look, I got the other baby. Some of y'all may know that in your everyday life today. So Sarah got upset. She said, Abraham, get rid of them. I don't want this woman nor her baby in my house or anywhere around me. Get rid of them. Abraham was saddened, heartbroken, because he knew that Ishmael was his son also, as well as Isaac. But God came to Abraham and said, Don't be upset. We know that. It's displeasing in your sight. Don't be upset. Do whatever Sarah tells you to do. 
Now even for Abraham, this was another level of his test. Told some folks this morning, I don't like Abraham. I never liked Abraham too much. As we preach, you understand why. Because to me, he was a pimp. Well, if you put your wife up to protect you or to benefit you, according to my understanding of the definition of the word, he was a pimp. You need to understand that God can use anybody. Anybody, anytime, anywhere. God can even use you. Somebody. Abraham had these two sons, but God said to Abraham, do what Sarah tells you to do. Then God says, yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. Did you catch that now? He is your responsibility and your seed and because I'm blessing you, I'm going to bless whatever comes out of you. He said, I'll show mercy to thousands of them and love me and keep my command. Abraham, I'm going to bless both of them. Abraham rose up and this is what made me hate him even more because he, he rose up and took bread and a skin of water and I'm saying to myself, now you know God said that he was going to bless him but all you gave was a bread and water and said, get out! Get out of here! You mother my child, you and the baby, get out into the wilderness. So you see, I'm not, liking, I'm not liking him too much at this point. Amen. Then she went out and wandered with no direction. But then I paused and said, mm, Abraham went out when God told him to go with no direction. Maybe he believed that, that God would lead her since he said, I'm going to make him somebody. You see, one thing you learn is as you take the little times or many times God has blessed you and, and you think about that when you're going through your wilderness, you'll find that you can have some power to make it through the hard times because you look back and say, right, that's how I got over before, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. I got over. Well, put out. Then the scripture says, and the water and the skin was used up. And, 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 and it looked like death was going to be for both of them. So she put the baby, the child, under a branch, a tree, a shrub. She went across about a bull's shot, and I would say from maybe the front of the church to the back of the church, so she said, I, I can't stand here wait for, for, to see my baby die. So I, I'm out here in the wilderness. I don't know anything else to do. Out of water, out of food. Nothing is going right for me right now. Let me walk. She walked away from the baby. Crying. Then God said, I hear the voice of the lad. Now, uh, she was an Egyptian woman. But you know, you can pray to God in many different ways. Sometimes you don't know what to say. Sometimes you hear people praying so eloquently and you feel so inadequate. Some old preacher told me a long time ago you have to do is moan. Hey, you don't say just moan. Because mm -hmm. the devil can't understand it. Help me, somebody. So she cried. She had to know Abraham's God. She cried. But God said, 
I heard the baby cry. Now the, the lad, because it wasn't about, about 13 years old, I heard the lad cry. God said, I heard the lad cry. The angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. I want you to digest that a little bit. He heard the voice of the child. Don't get caught in that peace. But where he is. God hears your voice. Where you are. Your situation. Where you are mentally, physically, and spiritually. Where you are. God hears you. You ain't got to make any preparations for God to hear you. He hears you where you are in your mess. He hears you. The first time some of us heard, knew that God heard us, we were in the mess of our lives. And God heard us and said, come on out of it. A few days ago, I went to the funeral of my niece, 47 years old, suffering from debilitating arthritis since the age of nine, in a wheelchair, couldn't move, and hands were curved, everything. Her daughter got married about a month ago, and from her sick position she she sold her daughters I don't know how she did it because with God she can do anything she sold her daughter's wedding gown for the wedding in her wilderness she sold that gown then the other day Reverend Kenna was telling me about it I had an experience two weeks ago. I was a little bit a part of it because he called me, saying they wasn't feeling well, and the homeless people came to eat. And he called me and said, what to do? I said, Reverend Kenner, Reverend Bellamy, let them in. It's cold out there. At least let them in. They came in some were talking about where the food we're hungry, with this and that, and I think they had some fruit that we were able to give them. And he said, one of the gentlemen in that group, in the midst of these men being in their wilderness, said, Let us pray. Let us pray. Church folks could understand the power. Let us pray. They didn't have physical food, but they had spiritual food that gave them power over the moment. I heard his voice where he is. Arise up, Hagar. Stop your crying. Get up. Lift up the lights. Hold him with your hand and I will make him a great nation. Sometimes God is just preparing you. Sometimes God will say, no, can you handle the blessing I have for you? Will you know bless you or will you think you did it all by yourself? You just need to know you belong to God. And God said, I'm not going to leave you. I'll be with you always. So when you're in that wilderness, husband, job, life, whatever, help. Remember, the bread may be gone. The water may be gone. The friends may be gone. But God said, I'll be with you. He already has you. Ishmael was Abraham's son. We are children 
children of Abraham. And when we're in the wilderness, Joanne, it is not by ourselves. We may not be to see anybody, but have you noticed in God's own time? You didn't know how you'll make it the next day, how you pay your bills, how you live, how, 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 oh, rejected by your family. But God said, don't worry. The earth is mine and I know every piece of it. I'm coming to you, not after you clean yourself up, not after you get it all together. I'm coming to you where you are. Huh, what, what, what happened there? What happened? How did it switch over? A lad crying out. And God heard them. Sometimes rather than getting upset, frustrated, heartbroken, angry with the world, stay away, stay away somewhere. Find yourself a closet. Find yourself an empty room. If the place is too small, go stand in the street somewhere. Call out to God in the way you know how. What does it help me, Lord? Oh, 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 oh. You got to say it. And you'll find your God in the midst of your wilderness. Thank you. We have so much that when we lose anything, we're all broken up and messed up. God will cause us to appreciate what he's doing for us. Have you had your wilderness? Anybody had a wilderness? Anybody got a wilderness right now? God is in it. If you believe he's in it, you ought to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, because you know God is in it. You know it's not going to last forever. God is in it. He hear your voice. He's got a promise for you. Stand across the church. If you haven't given your life to Christ. That's the first step. The first step is giving your life to Christ. Because that's how you link up with God. Without Christ, I'm all by myself. Isn't that right? I'm all by myself without Christ. So if you're here today, haven't given your life to Christ, we invite you to come right now. This thing is real. It's real. My brother, my sister, if you have not given your life to Christ, we invite you to draw forth right now. And maybe you've given your life to Christ, but you don't have a church home. God sent you here this morning. Wherever you are, don't let anybody stop you. I don't know about you, but I've had my wilderness. And I might have a few more before I die. But one thing for sure I know, isn't that, Debbie? Everything you're going through, you know you got a God. So no matter how sick you are, you come on up here to church. Because you know he'll carry you through the, all these years when the doctor said you'd be dead. Yes, it will. Those homeless men, as they stood there in prayer, even they, even they in the cold knew they needed God. My brother, my sister, if you don't have a church home, you need to come running right now. Don't let the devil hold you back. God wants to bless you in your wilderness. Maybe you don't have a wilderness right now. 
God wants to keep you. Yes, He will. Jonah, in the belly of the whale, was in His wilderness. Elijah on the mountain top, hiding from Jezebel, her team, in the wilderness. Some other day, the doors of the church open. The doors of the church. God wants to bless you. This ain't a sad sermon. This is a happy sermon. Because, because I know my Redeemer liveth. And as, as, as Job said, in this life, I shall see it. I know it. Somebody today, the doors of the church open. God wants to bless you. Somebody say, Amen. Praise the Lord, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else today. Somebody else. It's passing over. The storm is passing over. Storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Sing it, everybody. Hallelujah. There's somebody else out here today. Somebody else is out here today. God will sing it out. Sing it out. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. say well you know I, I, I like what happened this morning in church today but I want to wait and see maybe the next time God sent you here do you really believe that you came here as many times as you passed this place as many times as you felt like uh, it's too cold to get out of the house huh? As many times you had a hangover and you didn't think you could uh, justify going to church. Uh, help me somebody. God sent you here that you might be blessed today. Not what you left at home. Uh, not the mess of your life. God said I want to bless you today. Don't you deny his blessing. You need to come forth and try him. Taste and see. And even though you've been in church. Somebody told me they hadn't been in church a long time. God wants to bless you. Sing that one more. Time. Oh, yeah. this is the right place for you and you walk out of this door and you don't have a place to call home 
You don't have a relationship with God and you're in the middle of your storms and, and in the mess and you don't think you're good enough. None of us are good enough in this place. But through the grace of God, you need a church home. We invite you to sing one more time, choir. the person I don't care if you think you know them you've been married to them or whatever the case might be you met them in the alley wherever the case might be ask the person next to you uh, do you have a church home and then if they say then say would you like to be a part of St. Stephen's if they say yes bring them on up or let them come on up front make sure you ask somebody because you're not doing it for me you're doing it for the Lord you're doing it for that person if they say no leave them alone we ain't making nobody do anything amen Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Hey, hey wait, wait, wait a minute, Jeff. Praise the Lord. Hey, praise the Lord, Jeff. Don't hold so tight. I don't know if she's coming on her own or not. She look like you're breaking up here. Hey, Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know we got communion and everything. We only got a few more minutes. We'll be out here about five or ten past. Let's, listen, there's somebody. Thank, thank you, Brother Jeff. There's somebody else out here. Somebody else. I know the spirit tells me somebody else needs to make the change, but the enemy is saying, wait. Well, y'all tell the enemy to go to hell. You're going to make a change in your life. Amen. There, there, there's, there's somebody else here. You know who you are. You know that you've been convicted this morning. God wants you to come, and you're just holding it back for another day. Don't miss out on what God has for you, my brother, my sister. Don't miss out on it. Okay, now let's sing one more time. I'm going to ask that you introduce yourselves to the congregation. You don't have to say anything else if you don't want to. Okay, you can say more. All right. Praise God. My name is Shalia Ifini. Um, Ifini. Um, I'm a new member here now. So yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Again, my name is Devin Chapman. Um, a lot of you may know me through different various uh, ministries throughout the AME Church, the LAY, um, y, the YPD, thank you. Um, I come to, to start over again. Um, they always, they said, they said, uh, they say, um, God never leaves you, you leave God. Here I am. Amen. There's a word for you. From the congregation, from God. For God's soul. We open the altar prayer and they'll talk with you. 